Hello there everyone and welcome back to Empire Total War. Today we're playing the American Revolution mod and as per the vote we had over on YouTube. Over on YouTube, we are on YouTube right now. Um, but in the community tab we had a vote on whether to play the British or play uh, the American colonists and the American colonists won by 55 percent of the vote. So it's pretty close vote. Normally it's uh, really lopsided where one side completely sort of um, just overshadows the other ones. Anyways we're gonna go ahead and go through a little bit of um, the options that I'm setting up for this. So we're gonna do the Liberty or Death campaign. The American Revolution I believe is custom campaigns similar to the sort of um, progression campaigns you have in normal empire uh, where you start off sort of where the first settlers arrive in North America um, to the re revolution is the final part. Um, we're gonna do liberty or death campaign which is um, basically the just the the end of that uh, and, and kind of sandbox. So right now uh, it's set up uh, with uh, four turns per year, hard campaign, hard battle difficulty. I'm not entirely sure where you change all of this, I was looking through, but I think that that is good enough hard and hard. Uh, we're going to start a new uh, liberty or death campaign. We're going to choose full size units. Um, we're going to choose the 40 units. I mean, there's no, there's not that major difference between 30 and 40, so why not pick 40? Um, I might have, if it, there was an option to do 20, I might have done 20, because um, maybe it would be uncharacteristically big battles for 40 units. Uh, and here are the different campaigns you can do. United States of America... United Colonies, Empire, United States starting in the year 1700. Uh, we're going to do the American Revolution. I'm going to click on that. And then we get to the different nations you can pick. So I, for the vote, I choose American Rebels and Great Britain. And as we said, Rebels won by 55%. But for uh, anyone else want to play this mod, you can choose from uh, a number of dif different tribes. These three, Cherokee, Iroquois, uh, Iroquois and Huron. Uh, you have the Pirates, uh, you have the Dutch, the Spanish and the French. But we're going to play as the American Rebels. Right, and so they were loaded in to the actual game. Uh, now we need to just load the saves. I'll go through the process, how this works. We're going to go down here. First there, and we can see all the saves I did for the Polish-Lithuanian campaign. I remove, I have removed a few. I think I was close to a hundred. Um, but there we have it. We start off with these three provinces, and voila! Let's start the campaign. Ah, and so there we are, and we can look at our territory, our forces, and so forth. We start off with three provinces. We start off with Boston. Albany, New York, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, where in which our forces are all situated around Boston, New England. We've got George Washington um, and Nathaniel Green, lots of veteran Minutemen and some Dragoons, and over here it's veteran Minutemen. Uh, it's basically the same. You might be a bit confused because that looks like the... Um, sort of uh, the low caliber howitzer, but it's actually a, a six-pounder artillery piece, uh, which I was confused from the beginning because I thought, oh, uh, no, I get a howitzer in the beginning? I'll just blow these uh, Brits away. But that was not the case. Um, with uh, us lacking kind of troops all over the place, we kind of need to start to recruit some, and there's quite a lot you can choose from Spanish Marines, uh, New Jersey Battalion, 3rd New York, 3rd Pennsylvania, 5th Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey Light Infantry, I imagine that means, uh, Pennsylvania Marines, Continental Infantry, 
and that is supposed to be for North Carolina, South Carolina, and GA is G some province. Um, 3rd Battalion, Philadelphia Associates, French Naval Infantry, 3rd uh, Pennsylvania, Colonial Marines, American Line Infantry, Colonial Militia, 3rd Battalion, Philadelphia Associate, Veteran Minutemen, um, Colonial Irregulars, 1st Pennsylvania Rifles, Continental Congress Militia, Indian Native Musketmen, and Moyland Dragoons. Maybe not necessary to go through all of these, but I just want to give you an idea, because oftentimes people want to see certain units in battle, and, you know, I'd most likely just go after the stats, so maybe if you have a favorite um, that you want to see, then just give that a shout out. We start off with the kind of lot of money, so I'm going to take the one that has highest accuracy, which is the New Jersey Battalion. So we're going to bring two of those into the uh, into Philadelphia, uh, where in which we're also going to go ahead and build up the province. Uh, we're also going to build up Albany, New York. I think we probably, and I'm actually going to burn down the coaching inn just to rebuild something that will generate money for me. Uh, we'll move the gentleman, Frederick, over to the New Haven School and we'll start off um, researching the square formation. That's very important since cavalry will be quite formidable early game. Then I think bayonets is probably useful in case the British charge us. Canister is also on the menu there, so those need to be quickly um, taken care of. We have a port over here. Now, I start off with three trading ports, so I don't need any more. So we're going to build a shipyard, so we can build ships. Necessary cannon foundry. We're going to build this up. We're going to save a little bit, because I want to recruit some troops here. And... Looking at what we have, I think we're going to go for the Colonial Militia Skirmishers. Just because I'm just going after accuracy. They're actually, the morale is pretty crap. But then again, all these units morale are pretty crap. But we're going to go for those just because of their high accuracy. Um, not really going to build ro roads to start off with, except here, I think. It's a good investment, though, and it means that I can quickly move forces back and forth. I'm going to move my spy down here to uh, Annapolis. Annapolis? Maryland? Jesus Christ, mate, did they make 8,000 over there? That's a lot. We might want to capture that. Then we have a few areas where we need to build. Uh, we have a peasant farm that needs to be built up. And then we also have a tr fur trapper up here that needs to be built. But right now it's too close to William Howe and his British forces, which seems to be moving towards Boston. Uh, we, however, outnumber them, but I wonder if it would not be prudent. We don't reach there anyways, and I think the garrison militia will be able to hold on whatever commander is down here. Humphrey Fowler. He's got the Delancey Brigade and the 17th Light Dragoons. I think we can hold them off because it's a large fort. Um, so I think we can afford to try and quash the British here. And one important thing by taking this province is that we get the school here in Brunswick. So we will be able to research two technologies at the same time and also denying the British um, from researching stuff like that. Uh, they have another school down here. I just noticed and maybe they have something over here. No. Maybe on Jamaica. No. Um, you end, I think what it is, right now there's no fog of war so we can see everything. But I think uh, in what usually happens, or at least what I think will happen, is it's similar to what happened in the American Civil War mod we played, where it starts off 
with no fog of war and then after the first turn fog of war is turned on i'm not entirely sure why it's done that way but it might be a, probably a bug uh we do have a navy we have a, a, a sloop called the Dolphin and a 40 gun frigate called the uh, Aceton. Um, the British have one force under uh, David Greenier, uh, which is a American brig and a British sloop. Wait, they've stolen one of our ships? Damn, they start off by stealing one of ours. And then they have another force down here. With an admiral's flagship, it's a third rate, so we want to stay away from that one. Uh, probably got lots of guns, and then it's followed by two American sloops. One called Bourbon, and the other one called Hector. So, I think we're going to avoid naval fights to start off with, but what we need to do is we want to secure our harbor. The one which made most of our trade income. So this one right here. Um, and that brings us to another important part, which is to secure trade with the other factions on the map. Now, this campaign will only cover the North American section. I do believe it's made up so that, yes, we cannot cross over into Europe. So for those hoping us to um, invade the motherland, that is not going to happen. Uh, so we've secured trade with the Dutch, which is a bit strange because the Dutch are in fact allied with Great Britain. Uh, Spain is, however, allied with us. So that would, and they're at war with the British. So trade should come natural. And Carlos III agrees. And then we've got one third, which is the Indians here. The Indians, the Iroquois Confederacy, they are allied with the British, but I think we can get some trade out of them anyways. Because we seem to be trading with Britain's allies anyways. And hopefully, this might just go ahead and save us from uh, adding another enemy to our, against us. So not just the British, which um, in and of itself is pretty bad because they have got lots of troops. Not so much in the north. I'm more worried about the fact that the, all the troops they have down in the south. They have Henry Addison down here with quite a large force. Now, hopefully he would be going against the Spanish and leave me alone. Or maybe some other uh, force. But with that, I think we're pretty much set up for the battle. We must have a battle every video. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bring good old George Washington... Um, and put some feather in his hat, because, I mean, up until this point, what he's done is, like, he lost that fort in the Ohio Valley, uh, he uh, assassinated a French diplomat, causing a war, and what else did he do? He didn't, uh, he didn't know his place when he and Braddock marched on Fort Duquesne. Um, if you haven't seen that, uh, docu maybe you didn't get that last part, <laughs> Because that's, uh, if you've seen that documentary that's on YouTube, and he, and Braddock in, in, like, says to George Washington, because, um, Washington says, Oh, let me deploy my, uh, colonial militia in, uh, fighting like the Indians. And uh, Braddock goes, No, no, Washington, know your place. And then, like, three seconds later, he gets shot. Um, anyways, uh, I don't know why I needed to explain that, but. Right, so George Washington is going to move there. We're going to bring everyone, actually. Everyone. Let's bring everyone. Or maybe I would send something down here. I wouldn't need everything. Just something to deter them. And I think just sending down the Virginia Dragoons would be enough to deter an attack if the British would come towards uh, Philadelphia. Because I don't need that much. Because I think we're already going to be overwhelming the British. So we march into position. And then Washington will be the one to lead the fight. So we got William Howe. Who's 600 men. And he's reinforced by two Royal Highland Immigrants. Regiments. Um, militia regiments. And then he's got two British lines, 
He's got the 17 Light Dragoons, he got 6 Pounder, and he got himself uh, a uh, 5 Star General compared to Washington, which is only a 4. We've got some uh, scraggly looking Minutemen, but we do have, we outnumber him in cavalry. Uh, and we do now outnumber him in infantry as well, but uh, the actual numbers of the army uh, actually put him at 1200 men and us just around there as well. Right, with that said, let's go ahead and see if we cannot win our freedom. Right, so we don't have a lot to actually deploy our men with, or deploy, so uh, let's just unlimber the cannon, which I've already done, and go ahead and fight. I didn't select night battle, and I'm not entirely sure why it's night, um, but I guess that's because we're... Maybe it's... we're ambushing how on the way, you can see the road here, so he's on his way to Boston to quell the rebellion. But here's old George Washington Carver and his peanut butter brigade uh, ready to stop him. Um, I'm gonna deploy the dragoons a bit further away. And then cannons deployed. George Washington over there and let's start. Right. The British start quite far away. They have one f line of foot hiding behind a wall over there. For some reason. We've got the cannons over there. And we already start off by shooting down quite a few of his dragoons and quite a few of his bodyguard. And then he's got the other British line hiding here. So I guess our um, ambush didn't really work. Now you can set up so that it plays um, American music, when they play Yankee Doodle, I believe, as they march. The thing is, the Yankee Doodle tune was so horrid that I decided against it, and also it comes kind of out of tune when everyone plays it, so it sounds like sort of a school band where everyone plays out of tune with each other, uh, which sounded pretty horrible. It was a little bit better because at first I'd actually set it to the... Uh, the British tune of British Grenadiers, which was sounded just a tad better, but not a lot. Where is the rest of my reinforcement? I cannot continue with just Nathaniel Green. Was that his name? Or am I just making stuff up now? Oh, there we go. Now they're turning up. Also, there's a little thing where I'm clicking on the picture, but it seems like the it, you have to click more towards the center or more over to the... Yeah, it's not a big thing, but... Seems like it's going to take a while for our reinforcement to arrive, and... I'm not just going to let stand there let my men get blown to pieces by the British artillery. So we're going to advance. I'm pretty surprised that a six-pounder gun even have the, the range that it does. I don't think in normal uh, Empire that a six-pounder would be able to reach this far. It seems that we are winning the artillery duel as of now. We've broken down one of their pieces. While we still remain with all ours. However, the British are focusing in on this unit of uh, ragtag militiamen. And have, uh, you know, injured that unit quite a bit. Now we need to remember that uh, unlike in the Polish campaign, not everyone, and especially here early when we don't have the technology, not everyone in the unit's going to fire at the same time, I believe. So we're just going to fire the first rank, so we're going to keep that in mind. And also the fact that we cannot form square uh, needs to be in mind as well. As the British have decided... Oh, now the bloody uh, Scottish uh, immigrants are turning up as well. Here comes the Scottish immigrant regiment. The first Royal Battalion of Royal Highland Immigrants. The thing is... Oh! Ah, oh, they've started firing against my bloody dragoons. I do not like that. We'll uh, charge straight ahead and we'll take out their guns. 
The cavalry is what I uh, think will win me this battle. It certainly won't be the um, militia of bakers, hunters, and whatnot. Scraggly tooth people. Um, I can't remember, it wasn't it uh, George Washington or someone like that that said um, resting on uh, or relying on militia is resting on a broken staff. I'm um, misquoting, but something like that. So as soon as possible, we would like to get a, a little drunkard, um, drunkard uh, Prussian uh, officer to come and train us in the art of warfare. Right, we go in below in dead ground. And I will call the charge. The British regiment hiding over there has opened fire upon us and that was enough to break us. Even though we didn't actually lose that many men in the charge. The British are pursuing but they have lost even more. They have lost 55 but they still stand. As I intend to save my infantry regiments, I will order my cannons to fire back and... Ah, crap. You know what? Fire it well. Fire it well, god damn you! No! <laughs> this is... This is the worst possible scenario. Not only do I lose my cavalry regiment, it kind of stopped the militia from firing. And... Uh, now my militia finds itself in quite the predicament. Now I'm hoping maybe Washington can uh, rally these cowards. It's not going to go well for the militia, I believe. Although the British Cavalry Regiment has lost a lot of men. I don't give a damn. Shoot the peasants. Shoot everyone. Way! America has won. Uh, just a little bit. That was disastrous. Right. But we are bold Americans and we will continue our advance towards British lines and we will get that cannon. Right, the cavalry is all over the place and it does not seem as though it wants to come back. George Washington is kind of in the field of fire of that enemy artillery. I'm just going to hide him down here in dead ground. And I think we're going to reassess our plan to attack this battery. We're, we, we are continuously bombarding it. The thing is, uh, probably most uh, we're probably more worried about the British regiment sitting behind the cover of that wall and also the fact that we've got all the other regiments coming in there. I think the prudent thing is actually to fall back at this point. Just for a little bit. I'm going to fall back here and meet up with Nathaniel Green and his troops. We've got the 3rd Dragoons coming up. And uh, we want to keep them out of harm's way as I line up all my infantry. I'm trying to find... You know what? It probably is the best place to hide them right here. So we're hidden, hiding all those in dead ground and I think we need to speed up these guys. We we'll probably need to speed up these guys as well. My artillery has been pretty accurate, so it might be that they, on their own, could take out the British artillery. Um, could be that the British are actually advancing on my artillery. Ah, the uh, Moyland Dragoons are back. Which is good, because I need them to now defend my artillery. We're going to send them up on this side. And if the Brit that British general, whoever he was, decides to charge our artillery, he'll run into those dragoons and he'll be worse off for it. Looks like artillery shots coming this way, so the enemy is open fire towards us here. What we'll do is we'll wait for Nathaniel Green and his men. And we'll entrench ourselves in this cow pen or whatever it is. This animal pen. Right, the other three regiments of militias coming up. Which is good. That means that we can soon uh, 
advance in full force. Ah, the, look at that. The British artillery piece is about to retreat. There's only got nine men left. Um, and they won't be able to take their artillery piece with them as all the trains have been killed. So they'll have to leave the cannons. That guy just died, meaning that uh, only eight people. There we go. We are uh, victorious. Now we're going to dislodge that British infantry regiment. Uh, I think they're. I think these are going to line up here to stop us going down the road. But we're not even going down the road. Oh, you're going too far. Right, gather up here, gentlemen. With the enemy cannon now out of the way, we can advance the cavalry. So, oh, they're coming back. Um, I'm gonna advance the dragoons up to here. And then we're gonna get these three to be the front runners. And this one, which has suffered quite a bit of artillery fire, to be the reserve. Nathaniel Green will be posted on the right side and then George Washington is going to come up and he's going to be posted on the left. We're going to put down the goons over here. And I think since the enemy is not really moving forward we can then move on with these goons, take this hill and then threaten them with cavalry charges from both sides. The uh, artillery crew decides not to reman the artillery, but they're gonna go ahead and join whatever commander has moved down there. What I'm actually missing now is... Um oh yeah, there was only one commander coming in. It is only how. I thought the re I, for some reason I forgot that the reinforcement didn't actually bring any... Um the didn't bring any uh, um, general. One thing you can also do within the options I saw is you can change out the flag. I'm not entirely sure if you can do it mid-campaign, but you can do it at the start, so you can uh, kind of change out which one you want. Right, with this, let's advance. Looks like the British are advancing down there. We don't seem to the artillery don't seem to have done any thing to this the eighth regiment. And looking at the positions, I think what we want to do now is actually change our battle plan entirely. And what we're going to go for is those Scottish troops. Right, let's march quickly into position and prepare to attack the Scots. We're going to hold fire and we're going to move as close as possible. The artillery is firing upon them. We have the high ground. Oh, they have realized we're there and they are relocating to face us. Let's get up on that ridge. As soon as possible. This one will be stationed here as not to get fire upon it. And then we'll do an organized simultaneous volley down towards the approaching British forces. Right, everyone ready? Let's send away the Scots. I guess the militia... I guess the militia fires all at once. This unit... Well, the British... Uh, I guess might... Im yeah, it might be that the, the militia will fire all at uh, the same time. 
But then I don't get why the British militia is only firing first rank. We do have the high ground on them. They have suffered a load of casualties. But the Scots hold on. <laughs> I, as per usual, as, as, as I say that, uh, the unit ranks. With that, I think that firmly secures our artillery position. There's no way the Brits are going to try and take that. Let's try to f fire at this one instead. And then also we bring up the Dragoons. Full speed Dragoons! The British general is moving in. If he intends to fight, then I will fight him. Why is Howe not sending in the other two line infantry regiments? This one's getting utterly slaughtered. And I'm surprised it's still standing. Given the amount of fire we're laying down upon them. Right. That regiment is dispersed. And so are the others, leaving only the general down there. And does he... Is he gonna ride into... Our range of fire? Possibly. But we're gonna continue after these guys. Gonna see about how we're gonna dislodge these guys. They're on the wrong side of the wall as well. Alright, I think we're gonna hold you, tell you to fire at will. Same with you, and once you're in position there. Ah. What we're gonna do might seem foolish to go ahead on attack, but we're gonna just Pin them in place with that, while the Dragoons are going to come in from the side and sweep those guys away. Right, that old guy is gone. We'll continue towards that one over there. Retarget the artillery. Right, let's cross the field. Okay, I don't know why they want to go that way. Ah, oh, the British, they move out of their position to face us. I guess these guys were kind of moving into a flank position. The thing is, as the British regiments at this point are only firing first rank, they're certainly not doing a lot of damage to us. What you can do is you can quickly ride up. You can put yourself in the side of the enemy regiment. And then uh, fire from horseback onto them. I mean, this way there's not going to be that much of a problem. I mean, the British are, I can imagine, they have higher accuracy for uh, their troops but I mean if only first rank is firing and I can lay bare all my guns uh, there's quite a big difference if the militia I mean the entire militia unit is firing while the British only the first rank are firing and now the dragoons fired and they're gonna charge through few British uh, soldiers were able to fire. You know what? Charge in and club them down. Help out the Dragoons. And the thing is, this is before plug bayonets and so on. Uh, so the British have no bayonets.
And I was about to once again say that they were holding on pretty well. But clearly they weren't. Right, the two infantries will march down towards here. I think you just shot friendlies. Both regiments are wavering. I mean, successful British cavalry attack could have spelt the doom for us. Let's go ahead and end this final bit. Let's have these. Face. William Howe. Shoot him down. And force him and his general staff to retreat. Come on, open fire, damn you. The, the general on his own managed to send these two regiments away. Why I ordered you down here? But he's not going to be able to chase them far because I'm sending in my dragoons to chase him down. Right, here comes the generals. And here's the other dragoons. Let's see if we cannot strike the enemy position from two sides and then have Washington shoot down the enemy general. Right, the cavalry completely overrun the British position. Oh yeah, probably tell the cannons to hold fire. It's a shame it's a night battle. It, I mean, it could be cool at some point during the campaign to have a night battle, but maybe not the first one. Because it's hard to tell the uniforms and so on. I really like the British uniforms though. Let's see, they're wavering. A British commander is now retreating. And I think that's not him, because he just got killed. Over here? What? He's got killed somewhere in here, and that forces the British to retreat. And we are victorious, and the uh, and the road to Maine is open. So that's the first battle. And we stand victorious. And here we have the statistics. So we deployed a similar amount of troops the British deployed. There's an eight-man difference in between how many we deployed. The British, however, lost 900 men, while we only lost 359 uh, highest killer is the third Light Dragoons, followed by a veteran Militiaman unit or Minutemen unit. Um, almost everyone in the army gets a Chevron except the Commander-in-Chief, uh, which is George Washington then. Uh, the Philadelphia Light Cavalry, which see saw no action throughout the battle. And one veteran Militia unit, uh, the one that lost the most, no, actually it lost the most men. Um, so there we have it, and the road now to Maine is open, so George Washington is going to go there, and it seems as though we're going to have to fight yet another fight here, unless I can force these to demand surrender. No, I guess we're going to have to fight another fight here, but that's enough for this video. Nathaniel Green is mentioned in dispatches, and George Washington becomes a confident general, giving him an additional star. So I believe he would be would be um, at the same level as uh, General Howe at this point, which I think had five. Uh, right, but I think we're going to end it here with also me building this because now the road is secure. 
Uh, we're going to hopefully get more troops and so forth throughout here, but this is the first video. I'm going to excuse the fact that it was a bit long, but then again, I needed to show you all the setup in the beginning. So now we've got a pretty good start, I'd say, to uh, try and claim our independence. But we need to wait for the Empire to strike back, and it might very well strike back very hard. Uh, but hopefully you'll stick around for that. And so I'll say, as I always say, Hopefully, you guys enjoy this, and hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!